Um, this is my TTL tester. Um, TTL stands for Transistor Transistor Logic. It's a family of uh, ICs that perform logic uh, functions like AND, OR, or NOT. Um, and um, here are the, the ICs that I have programmed and tested. Uh, the the chip the program itself can be extended to other chips, but right now that's what it's programmed. Uh, so uh, pick one of these and we'll put it in. Okay, how about seventy four twenty? All right, seventy four twenty is a uh, is a four input AND gate, I believe. Um, and I'm going to verify that. So we've put this chip in the uh, ZIF socket, and now I'll turn the, uh, whoops, there we are, and push the button, and it has passed. Okay, when it says password, exactly, is it checking? Well, that's a good question, especially in regard to this chip. Um, I need, what is that, what book is that that you're using? That's the TTL cookbook. Oh, okay. Sorry about that. 7420. This is a 7420. And oh, it's not a four input AND, it's a four input NAND gate. Did I say AND? It's NAND. So it's not AND. All right. Um, so when, when the tester is testing uh, simpler gates like the, uh, well, like these inverters or two input gates, uh, it tests all po all logical possibilities. You know, it tests the, the and two inputs and... true, the two inputs false, okay. one true and the other false, and for each one, so on every every uh, possibility. So it's built the code's built in for each type of chip. It is yes. Okay. But now then, with this one, that would be a lot of possibilities to have to type out in, in the code, and so instead, what I do is I test all four inputs true which produces not true as the output because it's inverted. And then I set each one of these to false, leaving the other three true so that each individual input is checked. So you're checking each individual one. Each, in, each input, yeah. So it's like A false, B, C, and D true. I mean, you know. Yeah. 9 false, 10, 12, and 13 true. But the, it doesn't, it doesn't do like 9 and 10 true and 12 and 13 false. It doesn't do that test. It just tests them one at a time when it's more than two inputs. If it's two inputs, it tests them. Well, like for this one, for instance, it only tests individual inputs. It doesn't test the all combinations. combinations. Okay. But, but, but all, it's likely that they're all working if the, yeah, 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 that's right. That's right. That's that's pretty much a good test. It's an assumption. Right. Now, one way uh, to, to show what it does if you fail is to uh, simply unplug the chip and press button. And of course, it failed because there's no chip. But um, that doesn't tell you which which part of the chip failed. Um, and uh, in in the case of well, this isn't. Let me make sure this is okay. This is the... Is that 7400? Yeah, this is 7400. And that passed. So now, I, what I want to do is uh, break the C gate in it. This part of the demo is uh, a redo. Uh, <clears throat> when I first recorded this, uh, I inadvertently flipped the chip around so that, well, the result was very confusing. Um, this time I'll try to be more careful um, with these uh, TTL, well, this is common knowledge. The notch end of the chip uh, indicates pin 1. So um, these three pins form a gate, and this is an AND gate chip. These three form a gate. These three, and uh, so on around. These three, and the and these three. 
uh, the power pins are 14 and 7. So the program labels these um, gates A, B, C, and D going uh, counterclockwise around. <clears throat> so being careful to select gate, excuse me, pin 8. We bend pin 8 up. Pin might break. <laughs> It feels a little close to breaking. Well, if it does break, I'll, I'll substitute another chip. Um, and we'll drop it back in the uh, socket here, in the zip socket. And um, test it. And this time we get Voila. the expected <laughs> message. Not the very confusing result that we had before that led me to say a lot of uh, ridiculously silly things. So, um, that's, uh, that's basically how the uh, sketch indicates which part of the chip has failed when, when, when something fails. Now let's see <laughs> if this now pin can be, <laughs> I'm going to try to fix it, but I, I don't have high expectations this, because this this pin has been bent uh, a couple of times, counting rehearsal. Oh boy! I hope it no, doesn't no, break. No, it did break. I did think. It? Yeah. Well, let's see. It might be just touching. Let's see. What if it gets stuck in there? Oh well, that's not a good idea, is it? No. I wouldn't do that because you might not be able to get it back out. Yeah, you're right. We'll just sacrifice this one. I've got lots of NAND gates. <laughs> this one has a broken leg. So, and well, it's good for demonstrating anyway. Oh, it's, yeah, it's good for I'm demonstrating that it failed. I'll stick another one in. They just appear by magic? Yes, uh, well, I... In truth, I anticipated the possibility that that pin would break because it's been bent more than once. So let's see what this does. And it passes, so we're good. Um, what else? Have I discussed uh, 16 uh, versus 14 pin? Not recently. <laughs> <laughs> not since doing it over. <laughs> not not since recording this video. No. Okay, okay. Well, uh, these are all 14-pin chips. I haven't uh, coded or tested any 16-pin chips, but the um, the zip socket, which is 16 sockets, uh, 16 pins, is wired uh, appropriately to uh, test a 16-pin chip uh, if that were programmed. In other words, um, well, how do you account for it being fourteen versus sixteen? There has well, to be. Well, yeah, yeah, there is. Um, the 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 power pin is the same. It's number sixteen, and if you put the chip all the way to the left, that becomes pin number fourteen on the chip. So it's it's just the plus pin is uh, the same. The um, the difference is really pin 7. Pin 8 is always ground, but for a 14-pin chip, 7 needs to be ground. And um, we have uh, internally uh, a jumper that wires uh, 8 to 7 and grinds pin 7. So they're both grounded all the time? Well, and when the jumper's in, they're gr the 7 is grounded. When the jumper's out, 7 is not grounded. Okay, so you have to take it out to use it for a 16-pin chip. Correct, because now 7 and 9, which is the empty hole opposite 8, are, are wired to MPU digital I.O. channels. So they can be used for logic, logical testing. Uh, and it's only when uh, the jumper is in place that 7 is is uh, grounded to, pro to supply power to the 14-pin chip. So uh, I think that pretty much shows how the, the, the success and failure works. Yeah, just throw in one, one or two more just for the heck of it. 7805. 
I'll have to turn 7405. it. 7405. Uh, 7405, sorry. 7805 is the voltage regulator. That's that's a 7805 right there. Oh, well, I don't think sorry. you can test that. No. Well, the fact is it's working. <laughs> sort of testing. <laughs> I can't remember. It's 7405. I'm sorry about this. I'm getting all bollocks up here. Uh, it's a hex inverter. Oh, open collector. So let me say something about open collector. The way open collector works is, since since different pins are outputs on different chips, okay, the chips have different uh, mixtures of pin numbers to inputs and outputs. I don't know what you call that, I, package design or architecture or something. But anyway, you can't just pull up all the pins. I mean, well, maybe you could, but I'm not doing that. I'm not pulling up pins with the resistors. Instead, I'm using a feature of um, the microcontroller, the Arduino um, Uno microcontroller 80 mega 328B, where you can specify in Arduino in Arduino code you can specify input pull up and internal resistor in in the microcontroller uh, pulls the, the voltage up. So if you're testing an open collector uh, output, you just name all these uh, all in these code. pins in the code, you name all these as input pull-up types. Oh, okay. And that way, uh, they, go, they go high when they're supposed to go high internally. Oh, yeah, I already did that. Okay, um, kick this on. Put in a... What have I not done? A lot of them. 7432. I think that's... Or gates. Let me try that. And passed. And the chips you have, those are the only ones that you've coded for, correct? Yeah, that's a four, quad four two. quad two input R gate. So once again, since it's a two input gate, all of the all of the combinations are tested. And it doesn't take one second to test. It tests like, it takes no more than a few milliseconds. That one second that you see, that's hard-coded one second. Oh, okay. That's to make it... Look better? Yeah, it's to so make it look... can read the change. No, it's to pretend that it's actually doing something. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's that little... sounds like an employee trying to shove papers around on his desk. Yeah, it is. It's a little bit. It's, it's like coding guile. Okay, we're coding. <laughs> we're coding guile into the into I'm the really program. I'm really doing a lot of computations. Exactly. Today. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh my. Yeah, that's it. All right. Um, so uh, I think I've said everything there is to say about it. One thing about it is when you're when you're getting the chips, you can go in either direction. Because so you don't have to cycle all the way through. No, it it's it goes it comes back to the beginning. And so when you code the next one hundred chips, you can navigate more easily. Yeah, it, it you wouldn't be able to put, well. You could change your steps in the dial. Well, the, the code is not terribly efficient. I mean, it's not intentionally extremely efficient, but um, only about a quarter of the memory is consumed for these chips. So there's lots of memory for adding additional chips. There just are not that many logic gate chips that you normally use, or that I would normally use. Um, there are other kinds of chips like the flip-flops, uh, comparators, uh, binary counters, whatever. They, they, they would be more complicated to test, and a diff different type of testing. You would need to, for instance, have a clock some strips, uh, some chips have a strobe input, and and you would need to, you know, do something to 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 uh, test those differently. So that that's basically the story.